Welcome to our channel. In this video we will review facts about Costa Rica. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Costa Rica appears to be another little Central American country at first impression. However, appearances can be deceiving in this situation, since it boasts the most successful historical record in the region. These 50 Costa Rica facts will help you learn more about this magnificent country. Cerro Chiripo is Costa Rica's highest summit. It translates as land of eternal waters, a term given by local Native Americans to the numerous lakes and streams that surround the mountain. Cerro Chiripo is believed to be 3.82 kilometers tall, with views of the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Caribbean Sea to the east from its peak. Because of its elevation, the mountain has an average temperature of 11 degrees Celsius during the day, with temperatures plunging below freezing at night. However, no snow has fallen on Cerro Chiripo in the last 100 years, according to weather statistics. Cerro Chiripo is part of the Chiripo National Park and the La Amistad International Park, which helped to preserve its original Talamancan montane forest environment. Before visiting the peak, travelers must first obtain a permit from park officials. Arazu Volcano is the country's tallest volcano. The origin of its name is unknown, with some sources stating it refers to Iztaru, a Native American settlement that previously stood on the peak. Other accounts, however, indicate that the volcano's name is derived from the indigenous terms, Ara, and, Su, which mean, point, and, thunder, respectively. Arazu Volcano is also known as El Coloso, which translates to, the Colossus, due to the disasters caused by its eruptions. Its most recent eruption occurred on December 8, 1994, and lasted only one day. Nonetheless, even that minor eruption resulted in volcanic mudflows that devastated the lowlands below. The volcano is believed to be 3.43 kilometers tall, with views of both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans from its peak. It's also made the volcano's peak suitable for multiple radio antennas serving San Jose's various radio and TV stations. Lake Arenal is the country's largest lake. It was named after the town of Arenal, which was originally located on the lake's former northern bank. Following the completion of the Arenal Dam in 1979, the lake expanded in size, forcing the town's residents to relocate. The government supported the migration, even constructing a new town farther north called Nuevo Arenal for them. Nuevo Arenal, like its predecessor, is located on the lake's new northern shore. Lake Arenal now has an area of 85 kilometers 2 with an average depth of 45 meters. Arenal Dam, located on the lake's eastern coast, currently meets around 17% of Costa Rica's power needs. Costa Rica has a diverse ecosystem. In reality, Costa Rica became the first tropical country in 2020 to not only halt but also totally reverse deforestation within its borders, restoring its original forest cover. While poaching and hunting are still problems in the country, the Costa Rican government has effectively implemented efforts to protect the country's natural animal population. These mostly concern the development of national parks in which wild animals can live in safety while being free. Corcovado National Park, in particular, has gained international recognition as the habitat of all four Costa Rican monkey species. The Central American squirrel monkey, Jeffrey's spider monkey, mantled howler, and white-headed capuchin are among them. The Central American squirrel monkey, in particular, exemplifies the success of Costa Rica's conservation efforts. Once an endangered species, its protection in Corcovado allowed the species' population to recover, and while the Central American squirrel monkey remains vulnerable, it faces fewer threats to its future today. Costa Rica had its own sophisticated society pre-Columbian. Around 2000 BC, Native Americans began farming in Costa Rica, which triggered the establishment of village systems. Religious authorities like as shamans or even witch doctors ruled these cultures at first, alongside tribe and clan leaders. Separate authority figures, such as village chiefs and elders, arose over time. This arose from the practical need of overseeing concerns such as farming, land ownership, trade, and even war. Trade became extremely important after 500 BC, with many towns growing in size as a result of trade with foreign cultures. The Olmecs and, subsequently, the Mayans were among those who had a great desire for Costa Rican jade. Indeed, by 900 AD, Costa Rica had evolved its own hierarchical societies, split into priests, nobles, warriors, and commoners, which lasted until the arrival of the Spaniards in the 16th century. Costa Ricans carved stone spheres for unknown reasons at the time. Archaeologists assign him primarily to the Dyquist culture, 
which thrived between 700 AD and 1530 AD. The spheres can be up to 2 meters in diameter and weigh up to 15 tons. The Dyquis created the majority of them out of gabbro, a volcanic rock, with a few made out of limestone or sandstone. Archaeologists are still unaware how the Dyquis produced the spheres because their culture inexplicably vanished shortly after the Spaniards arrived. The mystery extends to why they created the spheres in the first place, with the most popular idea positing that they denoted property belonging to chiefs. In fact, the spheres were unknown to historical science until the 1930s, when they were discovered during jungle clearing operations. This damaged several spheres because employees believed they contained gold. Authorities swiftly seized the spheres, but that hasn't stopped urban tales from circulating about them, including one that claims the spheres originated in Atlantis. The spheres have since become a Costa Rican cultural landmark, with copies or even originals standing in front of significant government offices and structures. Historians disagree on the Spanish naming of Costa Rica. Costa Rica means rich coast in Spanish, therefore the connotation is not in doubt. Instead, the debate centers on who gave the region its name, with some historians crediting Christopher Columbus. Others, on the other hand, credit it to conquistador Gil González de Villa, who visited the Pacific coast in 1522. There are records, in particular, of how he received vast amounts of gold from Indians, whether as spoils of war or as gifts. However, it is unknown when the Spanish authorities formally acknowledged the name Costa Rica for the region. It was also an ironic moniker, given Costa Rica has no gold or silver reserves inside its boundaries. Costa Rica distinguished itself from other Spanish colonies in the New World. We've already mentioned that Costa Rica has no precious metal resources on its soil. This resulted in only a few European settlers, as most of them came to the New World hoping to strike it rich in the gold and silver industries. This also contributed to Spaniards mockingly referring to Costa Rica as the country's poorest colony. Ironically, between the few European settlers and the small native population, this preserved the local culture of small proprietors and towns. It meant, in particular, that large-scale forced labor in enormous plantations, as in other colonies, was simply impractical. Costa Rica consequently stood out in Spain's overseas empire as a tranquil backwater farming colony. It was also the least affected by the evils of colonialism. Costa Rica's first civil war erupted soon following the country's independence from Spain. The war broke out in 1823 due to disagreements between pro-Mexican and pro-independence leaders. The pro-Mexican leaders, known as imperialists and based in the provinces of Cartago and Heredia, wished to join the newly formed Mexican Empire. The Republicans, on the other hand, were based in the provinces of San Jose and Alajuela. The civil war was over in a year, thanks to the triumph of the Republicans at the Battle of Ocamogo. In fact, the fight was named after the struggle known in history as the Okamogo War. Costa Rica's independence was not only protected by the Republican triumph, but the capital was relocated from Cartago to San Jose. In the early 19th century, cash crops were the source of Costa Rica's prosperity. Cash crops are crops that are primarily valued as luxury for export rather than necessity. These include cacao beans, coffee, sugar, and tobacco in Costa Rica, with coffee being the most lucrative. In fact, coffee became so lucrative that its cultivation gave rise to a new class of wealthy landowners. Between the 19th and early 20th century, these so-called coffee barons dominated Costa Rican culture. It also triggered a building boom in Costa Rica, which lasted from the 1870s to the 1890s. Roads and railroads were built by American investors to transport coffee from the interior to coastal ports. Out of the need for labor, this resulted in an influx of immigrants from surrounding nations, particularly Jamaica. The descendants of those immigrants now account for an estimated 3% of Costa Rica's population. In 1849, Costa Rica and Panama exchanged territories. Costa Rica ruled the province of Chiriqui on Central America's Pacific coast during the time. Similarly, Panama ruled the Central American Pacific coast province of Guanacaste. Both Panama and Costa Rica desired each other's land and received local support. However, neither country wanted a war, therefore Costa Rica and Panama held referendums on which country the provinces in question wished to join. This resulted to Chiriqui voting to become part of Panama, while Guanacaste likewise chose to become part of Costa Rica. Both countries have upheld the referendum results to this day. Costa Rica's military was abolished in 1949. This was due to the military's involvement in the preceding year's civil war. 
In fact, the new constitution created by Costa Rica during the Civil War expressly prohibits the formation of a new military. Costa Rica became the only Central American Republic without its own military, in the goal of preventing future civil strife. This hope became a reality in the following decades, with Costa Rica emerging as an island of stability in a region rife with coups, insurgencies, and civil wars. Nonetheless, Costa Rica has large police forces that obtained paramilitary powers in 1996. Costa Rica has a minor special forces unit as well. This gets past the military's declared illegality in Costa Rica by officially counting as a civilian unit despite not actually being part of the police structure. Throughout their shared history, the country has contended with Nicaragua over territorial claims. The conflict over the San Jose River, in particular, dates back to the 19th century. Nicaragua even refused to let Costa Rican fishermen and passenger ships use the river until Costa Rica recognized Nicaragua's claims. In 2009, this resulted in a judicial case at the International Court of Justice. The court ordered Nicaragua to enable Costa Rican people to use the river without first obtaining special permissions from Nicaragua. At the same time, the court acknowledged that Nicaragua had legitimate security concerns over river navigation rights. As a result, Costa Ricans passing via the San Jose River must subject to examination by Nicaraguan security personnel stationed along the river. In 2007, Costa Rica severed diplomatic relations with Taiwan. They did so as part of their acceptance of China's One China policy. Taiwan is regarded as a rogue province, with the People's Republic of China, PRC, as China's sole legitimate government. This policy is regarded by China as a non-negotiable prerequisite for commerce and diplomacy with other countries. However, the U.S. was concerned about the impact on Taiwan's foreign ties as well as rising Chinese influence in the Western Hemisphere. Analysts, in particular, see China's economic incentives as driving Costa Rica's decision to switch support from Taiwan to the PRC. Costa Rican President Oscar Sanchez eventually acknowledged that this was correct, with Chinese money soon supporting Costa Rican infrastructure initiatives. Among these projects is the National Stadium of Costa Rica, a new state-of-the-art sports complex that cost $100 million to develop. Agriculture continues to be a significant aspect of the Costa Rican economy. In truth, agriculture continues to be the backbone of the Costa Rican economy, with a continuous emphasis on cash crops. However, coffee has since dropped as Costa Rica's largest agricultural export, accounting for only around 2.5% of total exports. Bananas, on the other hand, have become Costa Rica's primary agricultural export, accounting for an estimated 2.37 million tons per year. Pineapples come in second, with 1.87 million tons produced per year. Milk and other dairy products come in second with 917,000 tons per year. Corn, palm oil, rice, and sugar are among important agricultural exports. Despite its importance to the country's economy, the agricultural industry employs just an estimated 12.9% of the workforce. Agriculture has various effects on the biodiversity of the country. Modern farming methods, such as the use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides, have resulted in chemical contamination of Costa Rica's land and water. It also decimated the local insect population and raised the likelihood of fungal infestations and pesticide-resistant bugs. In an ironic twist, this creates a feedback cycle in which the solutions to the problems caused necessitate higher usage of synthetic fungicides and pesticides. However, removing forested areas to make way for new agriculture has surprisingly enhanced the survival rate of several animals. For example, Costa Rica's most venomous snake, the Vair de Lance, has a pre-modern survival rate of 2%. Agricultural progress has made it easier for them to hunt their prey, and the current survival rate is 65%. Costa Rica also boasts one of Central America's largest tourism sectors. In fact, the tourist industry provides around $1.92 billion to Costa Rica's GDP each year. Costa Rica is the most visited country in Central America, with an estimated 2.68 million tourists visiting each year. Costa Rican tourism began modestly, with only 329,000 individuals visiting the country in 1988. However, by 1999, the figure had risen to more than a million, and by 2015, it had risen to more than 2.6 million. According to analysts, tourism has reduced poverty levels in Costa Rica by an estimated 3%. Tourism competes with agriculture as the country's economic backbone. While the agricultural sector is more stable, tourism accounts for a larger portion of Costa Rica's GDP, 
12.5% versus 6.5% for agriculture. It is also known as a world leader in ecotourism. Costa Rica began marketing its diverse wildlife to tourists in the 1980s. They promoted their national park system in particular as a method for tourists to experience wild creatures in their natural habitats at a little environmental cost. According to government figures, 54% of Costa Rica's tourists visited the country particularly to visit its national parks and other protected areas in 2006. Costa Rica's government has undertaken a number of projects to promote the country's ecotourism attractions. The Bandera Azul program, for example, encourages beaches with clean sand and water. The program also incentivizes owners and developers to maintain environmental standards by having provisions for promotion withdrawal if water and soil quality falls below a particular threshold. The country also features one of the world's greenest energy industries. In reality, green energy meets 98% of Costa Rica's energy requirements. Vehicle use accounts for the majority of fossil fuel consumption. Costa Rica's hilly environment has contributed significantly to this, providing lots of running water with electrical potential. In fact, hydroelectric electricity accounts for 80% of Costa Rica's green energy. The remainder is made up of geothermal, solar, and wind energy. And, while approximately 2% of Costa Rica's electricity infrastructure still requires the usage of fossil fuels, this is only due to necessity. These include things like emergency electricity or energy for areas with insufficient infrastructure. In fact, an abnormally wet rainy season in 2017 delivered enough water for the country's hydroelectric power facilities to supply 100% of Costa Rica's electricity needs for 75 days in a row. The Camino de Costa Rica is the country's most well-known hiking trail. The trail spans the country for 280 kilometers, beginning on the Atlantic Ocean and continuing through Torchiguero National Park and up into the mountains. The trail then descends to the Pacific Ocean via the Barbilla National Park, via the Turrialba and Arazu volcanoes. The path was constructed by the government in 2018. It did so as part of a scheme to revitalize the region's moribund rural economy. Prior to the trail's establishment, local poverty had increased by 25%. Incomes had also fallen by 40%, while rural flight to cities had increased by 40%. Within a year of the trail's establishment, income had increased by 30%, with the trend continuing in the years that followed. Costa Rica has its own list of the seven natural wonders of the world. One of them, Cerro Chiripo, Costa Rica's tallest mountain, has already been discussed. It is actually third on the list, with Cocos Island in the Pacific Ocean taking top place. In 1997, it was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Arenal Volcano, which became notable for a long-duration eruption from 1968 to 2010, is ranked second. Costa Rica comes in fourth position with the Celeste River, which is famous for its vibrant turquoise color. The Torchiguero Canals, which connect the different water features of the Torchiguero Conservation Area, come in fifth position. Poa's volcano, which has erupted 40 times since 1868, comes in sixth place. As a result, tourist access to a scientific observation station, which requires reservations, is restricted. Unsurprisingly, this has only served to increase interest in Poa's volcano. Finally, there is the Monteverde Reserve, which is a protected cloud forest with seven separate ecological zones. The reserve is very popular in Costa Rica's ecotourism programs, with an estimated 70,000 visitors each year. The Costa Rican tourist industry is currently facing a significant competition in the sex trade. Prostitution is technically not illegal in Costa Rica, although it is extensively regulated, as seen by sex workers enjoying specific safeguards in the country's healthcare system. However, difficulties have arisen in the form of widespread child prostitution, which has drawn international condemnation. While Costa Rican law considers it illegal, enforcement has been patchy at best. This is related to sex trafficking, in which destitute women from nearby countries are compelled to work as prostitutes in Costa Rica. The sex trade has also contributed to the spread of HIV throughout the country, which is a major source of concern for the authorities. Discrimination and even violence against sex workers, particularly transgender ones, are also difficulties. The export industry is likewise quite important in the Costa Rican economy. Costa Rica produces a variety of commodities for export in addition to agricultural items. Medical equipment is one among these, with the country manufacturing an estimated $2 billion in medical equipment each year. Several large electronic corporations, notably Intel Corporation, have factories in the country.
Costa Rica alone produces an estimated $841 million in electronic circuits each year. Intel products alone contribute for 20% of all Costa Rican exports, or 4.9% of GDP. Abbott Laboratories, Amazon, and Procter & Gamble have all made similar investments in the country. All of these businesses have invested under the condition that exports account for 50% of the total revenue. The infrastructure of Costa Rica has a mixed reputation. On the one side, Costa Rica boasts a well-developed transportation network, with an estimated 30,000 kilometers of road connecting its Pacific and Atlantic coasts. The country's transportation system also connects to that of its neighbors, Nicaragua and Panama. Costa Rica, like the United States, has a large train network, as well as several significant ports and airports. On the other side, much of its infrastructure is in disrepair. The United States government stated in 2016 that Costa Rica's infrastructure need renovation. The OECD added its critique that year, stating that Costa Rica's public transportation infrastructure, particularly its train services, are insufficient. In 2017, Costa Rican President Luis Solis recognized these criticisms. He stated that modernizing and expanding Costa Rica's infrastructure will cost billions of dollars. San Jose, Costa Rica's capital, is also the country's largest city. The city proper has a population of only 300,000 people, whereas the greater metropolitan area it is part of has a population of 2 million people. This represents roughly half of the total population of Costa Rica. San Jose, Costa Rica's capital city, has a high standard of living and the best public services in the country. It is also known as one of Central America's safest cities, as well as the most visited city in the region. The city also doubles as a tourism attraction, with sites to view including the Museo Nacional de Costa Rica, the National Theatre of Costa Rica, and La Sabana Metropolitan Park. The city dates from the early 18th century. Long before the city was founded, native and European communities dotted the neighboring Aceri Valley. In actuality, the city was founded as a result of the colonial ruler's decision to unite these communities in 1736. As part of the urban program, construction on a new church to serve as the new city's focal point began. Church officials chose St. Joseph of Nazareth as the church's patron, and the new city adopted the saint's Spanish name. San Jose, ironically, would not be incorporated as a city until 1813. Even yet, in 1814, King Ferdinand VII removed this designation. San Jose acquired city status in 1820, making it one of Latin America's newest cities. Costa Rica has a diverse religious heritage. Surprisingly, Roman Catholics account for only 52% of Costa Rica's population. The numerous Protestant denominations are Costa Rica's largest minority religion, accounting for 25% of the population. At 17% of the population, a similarly startlingly large fraction of Costa Ricans identify as irreligious. Costa Rica thus stands out in Latin America's very religious region. Immigration from Asia has also expanded the country's Buddhist population, which is now believed to represent roughly 2% of the total. Other minor religions in Costa Rica include Islam and Judaism, both of which have a population of less than 1%. The food of the country is distinctive. Costa Rican cuisine has been described by critics as mild, with plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Rice and black beans are staples, owing to Spanish influence on the local cuisine culture. Potatoes are also a staple of the typically starch-rich Costa Rican diet. Corn, the original pre-colonial staple, is still used in many Costa Rican dishes. Tamale, in particular, dates back to the Aztec Empire and is still served on holidays such as Christmas. Deer and turkey are still popular meats in Costa Rican cuisine, seasoned with pumpkin seeds, sweet peppers, and tomatoes. Costa Rican cuisine has also been inspired by Afro-Caribbean culture, including delicacies such as hog cracklings and mondongo soup. Costa Rica has a sporting legacy. Costa Rica first competed in the Olympics in 1936, with sisters Silvia and Claudia Pohl being the country's most famous athletes in 1996. The Pohl sisters won four swimming medals for Costa Rica, one gold, one silver, and two bronze. Costa Rica often competes in the FIFA World Cup outside of the Olympic Games, with football being the most popular sport in the country. In 2014, Costa Rica even made it to the semi-finals for the first time. In addition, it would have hosted the FIFA U20 Women's World Cup in 2020. Unfortunately, the global COVID-19 pandemic prompted the Games to be postponed until 2021. The country has one of the world's greatest healthcare systems.
In fact, when it comes to its national healthcare system, Costa Rica ranks higher than the United States. Socialized health insurance is available to an estimated 82% of Costa Ricans, with the government paying an estimated 70% of the country's health sector. Costa Ricans live an average of 79 years and have a national immunization rate of 91%. This gives them the second highest life expectancy in the Americas, surpassing even the United States. Costa Rica's Nicaya Peninsula has even been designated a blue zone, a designation given only to areas where people over the age of 100 are still actively living. All children under the age of 1 have access to baby clinics. As a result, there is a low infant mortality rate of 5 per 1,000 infants. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel, since we will be covering a lot of similar content in the future. Till next time, stay curious.